and we'll move I'll just move straight into session two, which we're now talking about deployment of electric buses and new technologies and strategies. And I'd like to introduce our, our first. In electric vehicles for at least 20 years, I see from the biography. Um, and in 2010, he established eBusco. Um, and in 2012, eBusco received the first European type approval for an electric 12 meter bus and presented the first prototype. And today, the eBusco 2.2 is the well established electric bus with over 300 on European roads. And following this, it introduced um, a lightweight composite bus called the eBusco 3.0, which I think we're going to hear a lot more about in this presentation. Uh, so over to you, Pete. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, all of you, uh, for the time and welcome. Um, I will give you today uh, a little bit more insights uh, from what eBusco has been doing in the last couple of years, where we stand now and uh, how we think the future will look on zero emission buses. I already hear a lot of discussions regarding uh, full electric, uh, BEV electric buses or uh, hydrogen. Uh, maybe we will tip also a little bit what our vision is on that. And also uh, the same on uh, plug-in overnight charging and uh, opportunity charging. We have made a small presentation. Um, I, um, we're gonna share that now with you. I hope you are starting to see it. Um, I will try to keep it short, and uh, later we will do all the questions. Um, yeah, as you said before, um, uh, we are already in electric buses since 2010. We were the first one in Europe. Um, at that moment, when we started with electric buses, uh, and we showed it at the IAA in Hanover, they said, um, Peter, you're completely crazy. This will never work because your bus has double the price and half of the range of our diesel bus. So uh, forget about it. But um, uh, we thought that anyhow, um, the air quality and the quality of life in bigger cities would be uh, an issue. And we also thought that TCO wise, we could match or even get better than an electric bus. So we um, deployed our first model in, uh, in Helsinki in 2012 at uh, Veolia Transport. Um, this was a very good test case. There was only one bus at that moment. Uh, but in the in the winter months, uh, December, January, February, it was minus 20. And as you know, this can also be a challenge for electric mobility. So uh, we started demonstrating there uh, that electric mobility in public transport with buses is working. Um, we gathered a lot of information um, all over Europe from a lot of different cities. And they said on the end, um, it's very nice, your electric bus, but still TCO wise, you are more expensive than a diesel bus. Um, because at that moment, TCO was still number one and uh, air quality uh, was number two. Um, so we kept developing. Uh, in 2014, we presented the eBusco 2.0 at the IEA. Um, before we were already the first one in Europe uh, or in the world achieving a full European whole vehicle type approval on an electric bus. And uh, the big step from the eBusco 1.0 to the 2.0 was that um, we, uh, let's say, lowered the weight from the bus itself and we hired the energy density and we got a more efficiency, um, meaning that this bus we could get not 70 people uh, on the European Old Vehicle Type approval, but 90. And we moved the range from 200 kilometers to 300 kilometers. And having said this, in this way, we could also prove that TCO wise, uh, if you uh, would stay above the 70, 75,000 kilometers per year, would be uh, better in TCO than a diesel bus. But at that time, it also, the, let's say the mentality, especially from the PTA has changed um, and said, uh, uh, we are finding not TCO, maybe number one, but we also find air quality and the living environment from our people, number one. Um, so they start changing the tenders. Um, uh, I think especially Holland is a front runner, uh, as you see how fast the transition goes. Um, so now we are at a, at a point that um, uh, we think and see that uh, the only way forward is zero emission. Of course, then you have two possibilities. Um, one is hydrogen, the other one is battery electric. Um, both, of course, are electric buses. Only one gets energy from the hydrogen and the other one from the battery. TCO-wise, um, we believe that uh, at this moment, and we think also for the 
next 10 years, uh, the battery for sure will win. Um, and after that, we will see that. But uh, if you look at certain items, I think also discussed before, uh, TCO-wise, uh, hydrogen is far off an electric uh, bus. The hydrogen itself um, uh, is by far not green or, as I heard before, yellow, blue, uh, grayish, black, whatever. Uh, but the, the, the supply that is there is not green. And um, uh, the last one is, of course, efficiency. You lose a lot of efficiency. So for the moment, um, uh, we, uh, uh, we fully believe in battery, battery electric vehicle. Um, we are an innovative company. Um, uh, we are pioneers, as I told you, since uh, 2012, and we focus only on zero emission buses. So we, all our buses that ever built are zero emission buses, battery electric. Uh, from scratch of on. So uh, from the first drawing, uh, it's a fully electric bus. Uh, we have gained, of course, a lot of experience in the last uh, eight to 10 years. And we have focused uh, especially also later on the TCO because I always say green is nice as long as it does not affect the price. So meaning we all want to go green, but on the end, of course, we don't want to pay more for that. So uh, we have been working very hard on that. And um, in our latest um, uh, model, uh, the 3.0 that we have presented last year on 1010 to the, to the world press, um, we have switched from uh, building the bus in steel or aluminium towards composite. So we took over a team from a famous uh, aerospace manufacturer in the Netherlands, Fokker, uh, that have a lot of experience in, let's say, manufacturing composite parts, but also calculating uh, strength, stiffness, all these kind of things. We took over this team and uh, for the last four or five years, we have been working very hard in the background um, to make this bus from composites. The reason why um, is mainly because we want to save weight um, and uh, we also want to work on the isolation of the bus that we see is very important. As you maybe know that heating and cooling uh, can uh, sometimes cost as much as driving the bus on energy. So we have also heavily focused on that in the composite bus and also the lifetime. Uh, we think that the lifetime of the buses will get much longer. Uh, before, it was mainly the emission standard that was depending on how long the lifetime of a bus is or was. Uh, but we see now that with zero emission, the lifetime, if the bus can handle it, can be much longer because of course it's zero emission. So uh, we have started um, since 2015 a big program uh, developing this bus in composites by uh, let's say achieving the better things that I just mentioned. Um, let's say uh, the big advantages are that uh, we can reach uh, a 500 kilometer range on a single charge. I also heard that this was a discussion. With this bus uh, we can achieve that. The reason why is that, let's say, a normal 12 meter um, uh, electric bus with a battery capacity from, let's say, three to 450 kilowatt hours has, a, has an empty weight of around 13 to 14 tons. Some are even a little bit higher, 14 and a half ton. Uh, but this bus will only be between eight and a half to 9,000 kilos. So um, this is, of course, a huge difference from far over 30%. Um, this means uh, we need far less energy, so far less batteries to achieve the same range, or uh, we can uh, put a little bit the same amount of batteries in, but we extend the range. Because we always believed in overnight plug-in charging. Um, we can deliver the option also with uh, uh, opportunity charging, uh, but um, let's say taking everything to account, lifetime of the batteries, the heat that it's done, uh, safety, infrastructure cost, we believe mainly, and that's what we are developing for, to have the bus um, a single uh, plug charged. Um, even with our newest plug, we can go up to 350 kilowatt of charging on a normal CCS2 plug, uh, if it's necessary to be this fast, but otherwise we would say overnight charging on the depots is the best way forward and then driving all day long 16 18 hours uh, without recharge uh, in several cities we are already doing this uh, munich uh, where you have a, a very low uh, 
um, uh, average speed, like sort one, around 12, 13, 14 kilometers, we can easily operate 18 hours uh, up to 300 kilometers without recharging. Um, and this 3.0 uh, uh, can even go up to 500 uh, kilometers. Uh, we can still keep our 95 passengers, so also on the capacity of the bus, um, uh, we don't need to lower down compared to diesel. Um, a big other uh, change is that uh, all the batteries are in the floor, so our center of gravity for the drivability of the bus is only uh, 80 centimeters above the ground. So um, this is, 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 is extremely nice. It almost drives like a like a race car because the center of gravity is uh, so low. Another part is that I told you before, the isolation of this bus is much higher, um, almost double of from a normal, uh, let's say, uh, bus non-composite because all the flooring, side walls, and uh, the, um, uh, the, the roof is in a, in a polyurethane uh, isolation. And this helps to get uh, keep the heat out or keep the heat in um, uh, a lot and saving a lot, a lot of energy. So this is where we are mainly focusing on to make sure that our operators can make the change from uh, fossil fuel driven uh, buses towards electric zero emission buses as simple and easy as possible. And uh, this is what we have been trying to, uh, to achieve in the last couple of years. Uh, and uh, with our latest model, uh, as you see now on the screen, the 3.0, we think that we come very far. Already with 2.2 now, um, um, I was even thinking maybe to show you our fleet uh, uh, live uh, on the screen. Uh, a lot of buses drive over 350, 400, even 500 kilometers per day uh, in, in different locations uh, with an uptime above 97%. So uh, this is mainly where we focus on. Um, <clears throat> battery technology. Um, here you see a picture from the 2.2. We strongly believe uh, already from the beginning in LFP. Uh, first, most important reason is safety. Um, uh, this battery has, an, uh, if there would be a thermal runaway, luckily uh, we never uh, had one. Uh, the, the, the temperature rise, uh, per second is extremely low compared to NMC batteries. Uh, the other point is that uh, why we choose for LFP batteries outside the safety is the cycle life is better. And uh, the other part is very important. We want to be cobalt free. So there is 0% of cobalt in our batteries. And we also think this is a very important point. Uh, that's why we choose for these type of batteries. Um, uh, and we have very, very good experience with it. That's also the reason we can go up to 10 years of warranty on the battery pack, what is, of course, very important for the complete TCO. Um, also here, uh, we have given the example, what is the temperature rise per second? An LFP battery is 6.6 .6, uh, degrees per second, and NMC is 153.9, when there would be a thermal runaway. Um, so this is extremely important together with also uh, the part of no cobalt. Um, that's our uh, uh, vision on the battery technology. Charging uh, infrastructure, we also want to keep that as simple and um, easy as possible. Um, so uh, we, we can do both depot charging uh, and opportunity charging where you see some pictures from below. Uh, but for sure, we believe that opportunity charging in the in the future will go out especially when the range gets longer uh, it also involves a lot of cost um, so our development team uh, always has this uh, very strong on top of their points to develop our bus with a certain range that we only need to overnight charge on the depot quite slowly on the other hand we also uh, work very hard to not only deliver an electric bus but also to be part of the energy system that uh, we already achieved to be bi-directional. So we can not only uh, deliver or uh, uh, receive energy from the grid through our charger system in the bus, but we could also deliver energy back. As uh, the more renewable energy we get, the unbalance in the net is getting bigger 
and um, uh, this will also get a more and more important point. Uh, like I said, we also have um, uh, quite some cities operating uh, where we have uh, uh, pantographs, both in upcharge uh, and different ones. And um, uh, of course, we use it. Sometimes it's necessary, especially when there is a willingness to uh, do also the electric heating fully electric. Then if you have operating days from over 20 hours, um, it's getting close. And we also work with pantographs. But again, we think in the near future, uh, they will go out. Also, especially that they have quite a high cost. Um, TCO, uh, like I said, um, uh, in 2014 was a big step when we introduced Bosco 2.0, because there, with 80,000 kilometers over 10 years, we could show that an electric bus was equal or lower than a diesel bus on, um, uh, on, on the total lifetime. And this, I think, was a very important point for us, but also especially for our customers and the cities. Apart from that, zero emission is, of course, still number one. Um, we have a, a TCO calculator on our uh, on our website, so you're most welcome to uh, to use it. 